Welcome back guys. This is where we left off in the last video. We were comparing calling a procedure to just typing the code that was within the procedure. And we came to the solution that just calling the procedure was a whole lot easier. But there is an extra layer of why this is way super cooler than just doing this. And that has to do with security. And now, please do keep in mind this is an introduction course so we're not gonna dive deep into security and user roles, right now at least. But this is important to know from the start, so I'm going to briefly explain it. And then if you find that this material is useful, you can take the extra step, research it, and figure out what you need to do in your situation. This might just be a good starting point. So this video is going to be about APIs. API is an acronym that is thrown around way too much in programming, but it's very important, so I would recommend learning it if you don't already. It stands for Application Programming Interface. So what in the world is an Application Programming Interface? Well, let's first talk about interfaces. And you could describe interfaces in like 50 different ways. But let's just kind of think of a couple of them. So here we have this beautiful city. We don't just want strangers walking in and looking around and stuff. We want to build up this crazy wall that only lets certain people in. <laughs> this is such an awful drawing. <laughs> Plus, this isn't even applicable today most of the time. Anywho, people come in and just pretend this is in 3D space, so it's like all the way around the city. <laughs> so people are coming in, they're like, hey bro, let me come in, I have cool things like weapons, and I wanna take over your village. And you're like, nah bro, that ain't gonna happen. So this wall is a separator from the city. And the only way to communicate with the city is through this wall. So if you're actually a good guy and you're bringing in some transports and with some goods and stuff, you can get in the city. But if you're a bad guy, you can't. It's kind of, it's an awful example of an interface, meaning that you interact with the city. <laughs> through the wall. You know what, this, this example is awful. Let me give a different one. <laughs> All right, so you have a car, right? <laughs> because that's what cars look like. And in here you have like an engine and other junk. But how do you drive this car? There's only like two or three things you need to worry about. And that's the steering wheel or the beach ball, <laughs> the, the gas pedal, or the brake, Seat belts and a couple other things, that's about it. These tools act as an interface between you and the car. The only way you interact with this engine is through the interface of the steering wheel, the gas, and all that stuff. And now that I gave you two useless examples, let's talk about programming. In programming, it works the same way. So you can have this legit tight awesome application, right? And over here, there's people, and they're like, hey, we want to use your application, but we're probably going to break it. Well, in this situation, an API would be useful. And what it does is it allows you to allow people to do certain things, and it allows you to prevent people from doing certain things. So the only way they can communicate with your application is from certain endpoints that you allow them to. So since this application is so legit, let's not even draw it as a square. Let's draw it as like some crazy shape, right? This is kind of like an interface layer. And the only way these people can talk to your application is using these certain points that you allow them to use to communicate with your application. And this is like very basic explanation. And the way you apply an API in different situations is going to be different. But you can think of it as this extra layer that you add on to your software that allows people to communicate with certain parts of your application. A couple examples of interfaces in programming are operating systems. Operating systems are a layer between your hardware and your software. The job of the operating system is to act as an interface between these two filling the gaps so the operating system can meet the needs of both the hardware and the software. Without the operating system, you would have to program directly onto the computer hardware. 
which we don't want to do that because then if you have different hardware you're gonna to have to make a whole different application another example are applications that work with a database you can think of a database over here and then you have the application that you use and then here is you you don't get access to the database the only way you can get access to the database is to type on your application thing so whatever the application is whether it be an accounting application or whatever you are very limited in what you can do you can't be like lol delete database because <laughs> the people who made the database don't want you to do that well in the mysql context procedures are an api over your database so here we have the database and then here we have procedures here we have programmers here we have the software they develop, and here we have the users. So by adding this extra layer of procedures, you are creating an interface between the programmer and the database. And that's good for two reasons. One, it simplifies what the person needs to know about programming in database languages. And two, it's a security measure, because if you have multiple programmers, you can allow certain ones to access certain different procedures. So that way they can't just be like, yeah, I quit. And by the way, I deleted your database. So yeah, you guys get the idea. And you can think of procedures as an extra chain in this link to the users. And it just allows for easier application development in some situations. If you got like SQL pros, having an extra person just to create procedures might just be a big waste of money and time. It really depends on what you're doing, the security of what you're doing, and everything else. Now there's one thing you need to know that when you're giving these people user permissions, you have to do some definition within the procedure. So you can say, this person is allowed to use this procedure. If you want to know more about that, just go on Google and search SQL Security Invoker. And that's something you can add into your procedure definitions by just putting one of these people's usernames, for example. And you can find that in the MySQL docs. Another thing, if you're looking for the term that describes simplifying things by creating an interface, it's known as an abstraction. Operating systems, for example, are an abstraction over the hardware layer of computers. That way we don't need to know every single thing about the hardware. Same thing for databases. This layer of procedures is an abstraction over the database preventing us from having to know every single thing about the database to write our commands. So yeah guys, that was a pretty awful video over application programming interfaces. <laughs> and those who actually create them probably are laughing at me right now. But that's all I got for you guys for now, so hopefully that was useful. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.